join us. Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome back to another episode of Clone Wars Thursday Throwback. We're looking at Mace Windu, continuing the sort of theme of the week, given my uh, recent review of the Mace Windu 187th Battalion Black Series 2-pack that just came out uh, very, very recently. But yeah, we are jumping back to about 2010 with the release of this version of Mace Windu. He was the second version of Mace Windu to come out for the Clone Wars. Um, the first one came out actually had a helmet and some extra armor pieces that you could sort of snap onto the figure. Um, that's one figure I'd never, I never grabbed a hold of, so we're going to take a look at this version. He does come with his Galactic Battle Game card, which, you know, that not super exciting, but they are what they are, and I'm going to show them when I have them, so <laughs> that's that. We do have the card back here, Good picture of Mace Windu. If you don't recall, when the Clone Wars movie was released in 2008, Samuel Jackson actually did reprise his role as Mace Windu. So that was cool. Now it was just for the film. Picture of the figure there. Two-piece Jango Fett helmet with hidden explosives. I do have that on hand to show you. Mace Windu runs into trouble from Boba Fett during a rescue mission. Mace arrives on Vanquor... Searching for the survivors of a crashed Jedi cruiser, he finds Jango Fett's helmet rigged with explosives, a treacherous reminder from Fett's son that young Boba has to score to settle with the Jedi. So we got some other figures there. We've got Commander Gree, the battle droid commander, Kid Fisto, and the jungle camo ARF trooper. We'll probably go, I think I've shown Kit Fisto, um, and probably get around to those. In the months and years to come, as long as we can keep this weekly series going, because it is good. <laughs> and here he is, Mr. Master Mace Windu. So yeah, he's a he's a cool looking figure. I like the uh, I like the animated interpretation here. Very sort of angular sort of features, very striking. The brow obviously is a big part of the figure there. Now I'm just going to remove remove that from the background so it can focus a little bit better. There we go. A nice close-up look of Mace. Got the Jedi insignia there on his arm, which looks good. Obviously comes with his lightsaber there. Almost looks a little bit too big for his hand, but, you know, why would they bother re-sculpting it? We've done tons of Mace Windu lightsabers up to this point. Why change it? So I do like the, uh, I do like the look with the clone, the clone gauntlets. Now he's got the soft goods. I don't think the first version had soft goods. I think it was sort of all plastic, so... Which, you know, I'm an advocate for both, depending on their um, application. I do like soft goods. I do like plastic goods. Soft goods allow for a lot more movement. Plastic goods, you know, continue a, a good aesthetic for the figure, I, I personally think. So he had some ball hinge hips there, which is good. It's a good move. We'll take a look at the, uh, the Django helmet here. So I still, my brain still hasn't worked out the whole Django Fett helmet, Boba Fett helmet after this episode, or after these episodes, um, given that the helmet is sort of blown up. And obviously Boba's got to get a, get another helmet with a dent in it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I still haven't put together the canonicity of, of that, but either way, this is still... Still a cool accessory. I mean, you can't... That, that's sort of all sculpted in there. The, the thermal detonator. You kind of get a few little details inside the helmet, which is nice. It's kind of a cool way. 
I don't know. I, I personally like the uh, the whole do- idea of Boba Fett having a vendetta against Mace Windu. And I know very early in, in the talks of the Book of Boba Fett show, you know, they sort of said there was a big, big character coming back um, that we hadn't seen for a long time and, you know, immediately sort of thought, well, Mace Windu could be a an interesting foil for for an older Boba Fett if he was to return and, you know, somehow find his way back into the fray if he survived Revenge of the Sith. I don't know that he did, but no one really dies in Star Wars. Somehow Mace Windu returned. I think he just landed in a taxi, honestly. There was so much traffic in that Coruscant night sky that he could have just landed in one and, um, you know, he sort of only lost a hand, so, you know... People have survived far worse in a galaxy far, far away. So yeah, later in the Black Series, uh, 2012, 13, 2013, 2014, the Black Series came out in three and three quarter inch and six inch, which wasn't confusing to anyone. <laughs> um, but they did a live action interpretation of this Mace Windu, of the Clone Wars Mace Windu. Still holds up probably one of the better Mace Windus we've seen. Uh, head sculpt definitely, eh, I think the sculpt is good, I think the, the colour choice of his skin tone should be more like, more like this one, um, because it's, yeah, definitely different from the, uh, the classic TVC Mace Windu, but, you know, it still works, it's still a good figure, and again, like I'm talking about here, the balance of a bit of plastic goods and soft goods underneath to allow for movement, but it still adds to that aesthetic on the front there. Um, but yeah, this was a really nice sort of live action interpretation of this Clone Wars version. And yeah, one I still think could see the day on a, on a vintage collection card back. You know, Hasbro sort of shown over the last few years that they're, they're willing to go back and revisit some of those, those Black Series 3.75 figures and put them on vintage cards. Um, whereas if Vintage Collection had kept going in between those years, um, undoubtedly would have seen this one come out on a Vintage card. So if you were to give him that slight little update in, in, you know, maybe change the skin tone a little bit, um, you know, darken, darken the skin tone to something more akin to this. Um, and yeah, a bit of, bit of photo reel. I think he'd be an absolute standout. Yeah, it's a it's a good good figure, but yeah, they're, they're, they're just a couple of figures I wanted to show off this week. Sort of Clone Wars versions of Mace, you know, very Mace centric week, which has been cool. Sometimes, I mean, from myself, I don't give him a good rap because he's kind of a jerk. <laughs> Let's be honest, but he is he's. He's doing what he thinks is right by the book, by the Jedi Code. Um, throughout the prequels, he's he's probably using political judgment more so than relying on his connection to the Force, um, particularly when he's dealing with young Anakin Skywalker, who could probably value from a little bit more, would have valued from a lot more um, individual thought and you know heart sensitivity from from his elders. As opposed to just sort of going by the the narrow dogmatic view of the Jedi, so to speak, you know. Um, but yeah, if you want to go back and watch those Clone Wars episodes? I think it was the last couple of uh, last couple of episodes of season two. No, it was the last two episodes of season two with the Zillow Beast, and it was the it was the two or three episodes before that. Not too hard to find, but yeah, it's definitely towards towards the latter half of season two. Um, a couple of episodes I need to revisit. It's been a long time since I've watched those ones. But, um, yeah, this is just a cool Mace Windu figure. Probably one of my favourites. You know, you all, you all know how much I love the animated style of, of action figures with the Clone Wars. That's why I do this every single week. So, again, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope you did. Um, yeah, any feedback or constructive feedback is more than welcome. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next week for another episode of Clone Wars Thursday Throwbacks.
Till then, may the force be with you always.